Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in to today's episode of Pickleball and Coffee. Grab your cup of coffee and let's talk some pickleball. So today we're going to be talking about partner communication. And man, oh man, is this a big one. It is incredibly important to communicate when you're playing with a partner. Like we've gotten in quite a, a bit of fights on the court due to miscommunication. Oh yeah, like probably what, 95% of our fights? I don't know, a lot though, like honestly. But we love each other so we make up afterwards and it's all it Takes good. a minute. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, the thing is in mixed doubles, so much I feel like of the success of a team has to do with communication. I know when I'm playing with people that's not very, that just don't ever talk on the court. So I have no idea what to do. I have no idea if I'm supposed to get that ball or if I'm supposed to let them have it. Like, do you ever have those moments where you're playing with someone and like there's a ball that's coming down the middle and neither of you hit it yeah. or moments where a ball comes down the middle and both of you try to hit it and then it just like goes out of whack like moments like that are so frustrating mm -hmm. to me because no one's talking no one's communicating and i don't know what's expected of me and i don't think my partner knows what yeah. i'm doing either you know absolutely and i think the bottom line is is that the way you win points is by being in control of the point and so that's why you know at the higher levels you have to dink and you have to hit third shot drops because if you continue to hit hard shots it's harder to stay in control of the point well you can also stay in control of the point verbally and if you are out of control and don't know what's going on you don't know who's going to take what uh then it just becomes really difficult because you're kind of you know not working together as much as you could be you're not playing as a unit totally so how about this like, what, when are good times to communicate on the court when you're playing mixed doubles? Yeah, so I mean, Danae mentioned it. I, I think like oftentimes she said, she talked about middle shots. So I think whether you're hitting a third shot, drop or drive, um, those balls that are kind of in the middle or just creeping away from the forehand side, a great time to communicate so we know who's taking that drop. Um, as well as when you're at the kitchen line and a dink, even while you're dinking, you should be communicating on those, those middle dinks so that you, everyone's in control and, and you know what's going on on the court. And the nice thing about that is it gives the person time to set up. And now I'm anticipating, okay, he's gonna take that shot. And so now I'm already anticipating the next shot. You know what I mean? Like, I don't have to worry about, I'm gonna have to take this. Uh, now I'm already one step ahead. And, and it's just so much easier. And I would even say like the higher level you get to, the more communication is important. You'll, you'll actually, you, at the higher level, you could get into nonverbal communication, such as hand signals, when to switch, when to swap. But you have to start just at the, at the entry level even, communicating with your mouth. It's so important. So middle balls. Mm -hmm. What other times do we talk on the court? Yeah, I mean, all the time you should be talking. I would say, <laughs> I would say, uh, on a on a lob would be a big one. Yeah, that's a big one because sometimes there are times where sometimes I can reach a lob, but there's other times where I don't, and usually you're the one that runs back and gets mm -hmm. them. And then with that lob, it's it's not only the lob, but what happens after the lob. Oftentimes yeah. the lob can induce a switch, so you want to make sure you know if you're switching sides. Uh, just constantly communicating. You know, there's there's a couple other times. Can you think of any other ones? Yeah, so another one that I can think of is on the third shot, not just who is like the one hitting it, mm -hmm. but actually if it's a good shot or a bad shot. So sometimes if I'm hitting a third shot drop and maybe I don't think it's the best drop, I'll yell out like stay um, because I want Barrett to stay back because I think that shot's attackable and I am anticipating that the, that the other team's gonna hit a deeper um, deeper return. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, when, when Danae and I first started playing pickleball, we used to, to watch Dave the Badger Wineback videos. Uh, yes. Shout out to Dave <laughs> if you ever see this. Shout out. Um, but one of the things Dave used to say uh, on third shot drops is don't chase the trash. So. Um, you know, you can play from, you know, the middle of the court, you can play at the up, up, you can play back, 
you know, you can play pretty much anywhere, but it becomes a lot more difficult if you're chasing bad shots. So kind of what Danae is saying is, is like if I hit a bad third or Danae hits a bad third, saying go or mm -hmm. stay so you know when to get to the pickleball. Because most of the time, I'm sure you agree, most of the time you can tell like, oh, right off the paddle, I know this is a really good drop. Or right off the paddle, uh, that's not the best drop. You know what I mean? So that's just another one where I mm -hmm. feel like we communicate. Yeah. Another one that would probably be a little bit more tough would be balls that are going out. Uh, on a lob or on a drive, if you feel like the ball's not coming to you and you have a bit better angle and you can maybe tell, that's that's more of a split second partner communication deal. But kind of like what Danae and I like to do is we'd rather over communicate than under communicate. Totally. So. totally, and even with that, I think there's times where I'll even call balls in that like I can, let's say I see a lob coming and I'm looking at the trajectory of it and I'm like, this is gonna land in and I know it's gonna be close, I'll just yell in, just so both of us know to keep playing the point out, right? Because there's times where I've also been playing with people that will just stop playing because they think a ball's going out, and I'm like, no, that, yeah. that's landing in, you yeah. know what I mean? So, so, I mean, we've talked a little bit about, you know, why to communicate, maybe when to communicate, um, but I think a big one that people struggle with is how to communicate. And so, you know, I think it's really important that you maybe talk, especially when you start playing in tournaments at the higher level to, you know, have a pregame little 30 second conference with your partner so you can kind of get on the same page on how you're going to communicate. Because I think there's different ways to implement partner communication. Mm -hmm. You want to talk I think, about some of those? Yeah, I think something for us that I've noticed, and we're not the best at this yet, to be honest, but talking loud enough i don't know if you guys are like this but when i'm like playing i feel like i'm in the zone and i'm i'm not very chatty like i'm not like chatting between i'm not very like social but i'm like in the zone i want to win and so i'm really short but i think that can also come off really quiet so there's times where you know i'll say something and, and he won't know what i'm saying but he'll know that i'm saying something and that's not incredibly helpful yeah so talking loudly and clearly would be a how to communicate another time would be like how do you want to go about calling those middle balls do you both want to call mine or yours do you want to you know one strategy you could implement with your partner is the person that's playing the forehand side because oftentimes especially at a higher level they play a, a greater majority of the court so possibly a, a strategy with your partner could be hey whoever's on the forehand side is making the call mine or yours um, this could be a good one to implement um, but you know because if you're both saying mine or yours what happens if you at this but same time you both say mine then you're in kind of that that tough situation but Danae and I oftentimes will both speak uh, in points um, saying mine and yours because again, we would rather over communicate than under communicate. Totally, totally. And just it's hard to have complete court awareness just as one person. Like, because maybe I see a shot and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna like dink it there. But maybe Barrett sees that shot and he's like, oh, actually, they're moving their feet. I want to go this way with yeah. it. And so I, it just, mm -hmm. it's so tough. And, yeah. And I think the last thing I would say on, on the how to communicate is is sometimes you can have brief things, strategy type communication in between points, but you kind of have to know your partner because for me, it's a bit overwhelming to have this, totally. this big long meeting in between <laughs> points about what strategy to implement. You can do that you know, in between games or in timeouts, stuff like that. So again, just knowing your partner and overemphasizing communication, calling it loud, calling it clear, calling it early, you know, early enough to where you both can adjust to the ball that's being hit. Totally. And I think another point is just create a good atmosphere with whatever communication you have. I think it's really important not to blame. I think it's really important to just move on quickly from mistakes and not just like hammer into each other. You know, um, there's a way to play and just be serious and move on quickly from things, but also not be a jerk about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. You'd be surprised if you'll use your mouth to celebrate your partner more than critique in a game how much your, your your gameplay, you'll win more games because they'll be more confident, you'll be having more fun. And again, that all starts with your mouth, it starts with communicating. So 
Um, anything else you can think of? I don't know. I think that's pretty good. I think that was a pretty good episode of Pickle Bowl and Coffee because <laughs> honestly, this is huge. Uh, so, you know, we, we're all having conversations in our head all the time, you know, and so, but we can't assume that our partner knows what we're thinking on the court when we're going to hit what shot. So just getting on the same page and then, you know, trying different things out, but really just having a game plan as far as partner communication goes will really up your game. So Totally. Thanks so much for joining us. You guys, if you have any suggestions for other episodes, we'd absolutely love to hear. You can go ahead and comment. Otherwise, like and subscribe, and we will see you in the next one. Cheers.